Today we have the wonderful uh, gospel passages of Mary Magdalene going to the tomb. And when she goes, she's alone, and this is a dangerous time, and yet she doesn't care about that. She doesn't care about herself. She's only thinking of Jesus. Her focus is on, on our Lord, and she goes there, and she just weeps there, standing there beside the tomb alone. And then she peers into the tomb and sees two, two angels there, one at the foot and one at the head of the place where Jesus was laid. And, and they turn to her and say, why, woman, why are you weeping? And she explains, because they have taken my Lord and I do not know where they laid him. And as she is saying that, Jesus appears behind her and he too says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And, uh, and, then, and then Jesus reveals himself to her, calling her the name Mary. So we, we see uh, our Lord maybe perhaps appeared to St. Mary Magdalene as a second woman, second person after our, our Lady because of her immense love for Jesus, her focus on Jesus. Her life is now totally committed to Jesus, totally, totally de devoted to Jesus. She loves him with all her heart and soul and strength <clears throat> and mind and, and everything about her is focused on, on our Lord. Her love for Jesus is immense. Saint Therese, the child Jesus, reflects on that and sees her great love because of her sins. She has been forgiven much and so she loves much. And Saint Therese uh, reflects on, on that and saying that's that's all, all true, but one can love Jesus too uh, without having sinned as our Lord has done for me. And I want to prove that I can love Jesus as, as perhaps as, as much or even more than Mary Magdalene because Jesus loved me so much that he prevented me from committing sin. So we can you know, have two, those different motives for loving God. We can still love him immensely even if we haven't sinned much. But we see the love of, uh, of Mary Magdalene and the reward that she receives in, in the, being one of the first to see Jesus after the resurrection. Mary Magdalene going with St. John the Apostles with Mary, the three great lovers uh, before the, the love himself on the cross. They are there uh, withstanding all the abuse and, and uh, of the crowds and yet their, their love uh, burst through all of that. <clears throat> and uh, this, we know that love is the most important thing. God is love itself. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love is what pleases God the most. Love is perfection. Love is perfection. And we must focus on love throughout our Christian life. We must uh, learn about it, learn how to practice it, learn how to have it more and more c completely and totally in our heart. It should be uh, our, the number one value, we should say, number one value in our, in our focus, <clears throat> in our spiritual life. We have to learn how to love, and love is a positive thing. It's not a negation, it's not a reluctant thing. We need to, love is a positive thing, it's a proactive thing. We have to go out, reach out, reach out in our thoughts and our actions uh, to God and to our neighbor. We need to love powerfully, strongly, overflowingly, uh, love is not a stingy thing. It's a it's a powerful thing, and love makes uh, love bursts through all the problems of our life and all the fears and and uh, God Himself is love. And when we when we think of uh, our relationship with God, it should always be in those terms. It shouldn't be in terms of uh, a slave master or an angry God. We should never think of God in that way. We should always see, see the, the loving uh, face of God turned upon us. Even if we have sinned, we should seek the sort of sorrowful love of God looking upon us. And if we always see God in that way, which we should, as uh, St. Therese is a, a perfect example of how we should, teaching us, uh, that would, uh, that's the true face of God, but also the face that will make us learn to love him more and more if we see he's always looking at us in that way and that with that loving fatherly care and uh, 
uh, concern for us. And with that love that grows uh, for him and in our prayer life and uh, focus on the Eucharist, we grow in that love and we need to uh, immediately show that towards our, our neighbor. We need to think of our neighbor in the same terms. As we think of God with an, as a loving father, we need to think of our, our neighbor as one deserving of love and deserving of the love that God wants to, sh to show, th show them and, and to love them because God wants us to. And it was always there to witness our, the way we treat our neighbor and the way we think about our neighbor. So we ask St. Mary Magdalene to give us, teach us, to pray for us, and to help us to, to love as she did. <laughs> Thank you. 